today I am back with hope. I am back with a solution that is so stupid, so crazy, so expensive that I am the only one dumb enough to try it. My friends, the last time we were here with the PS5 and this M.2 adapter expansion card that I had and this raid card, I left here in defeat because I was not able to get it working. And in fact, the software raid card that I used previously worked better than the hardware raid card. You can check out the video where we chested that as well as a GPU up in that top right hand corner. But my friends, we are going to attempt to deliver four terabytes of NVMe 4.0 RAID storage across a single cable to the PlayStation 5. Yes, my friends, that's right, you heard me. Network attached PS5 storage based on the M.2 slot that's baked into this PS5. This idea is so ridiculous that I can guarantee nobody else has even thought of it because it really is so expensive and so stupid because the crux of how we're getting all of this done is with this bad boy right here. This is an NVIDIA Mellanox Bluefield 2 DPU of which it costs a cool $2,000 and I happened to have needed two of them in order to make this entire operation work. So ignoring the cost of the SSD, the PS5, and the PC that all of this is gonna be running on, we're at roughly $4,500 to get all of this set up. Once you add in all the other parts, it's well north of five grand, which is obviously absurd. And we're gonna talk about how we're gonna go about this, where we are at the current step of the process because we haven't gotten it worked in on the PS5, but that doesn't mean that there isn't some interesting crap going on in this video. So hold your horses as I talk about today's video sponsor, which makes sure that I can afford stupid, dumb projects like this. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Honey. Do you love spending money? I sure do. I also like saving money and that's where Honey comes in because it's your online shopping best friend to make sure that you're never gonna have to overpay for things ever again. My friends, you know about Honey. It's the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. It's super easy, all right? You go to joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. You get it on your computer for free in just two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. And when you're on one of those sites, you just wait a few seconds as Honey searches for those coupon codes and bam, if Honey finds a working code, you're off to the races and you can watch prices drop. I can't I can't tell you how much money this has saved me when it comes to buying things, even on Newegg, when I wanna apply the coupon for some deal of the day that I didn't know existed, Honey's there to help me out. And those of you of the UFD tech audience who have already installed Honey, you've saved over $54,000 so far in savings. And my friends, Honey supports all kinds of sites from tech and gaming to clothing brands, even food delivery. So all you have to do again is go to joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech, install it in two easy clicks and start saving money by using your online shopping best friend. Big thanks to Honey again for sponsoring today's video. And in case you want to support this little stupid PS5 adventure, it would mean the world to me if you could sign up for our float plane or our Patreon, which are linked in the video description. The monthly support that we get from the people who watch this channel means the world. It made sure that I could keep the lights on in the transition periods that we've been going on and makes it so that I can focus on making crazy videos that nobody else would touch. So let me lay the groundwork here. I walked away from the last video thinking that it was over. There was no way to get a RAID card set up on the PS5 because you have to initialize the driver on the RAID card in order to get the SSD to work. And the PlayStation 5's operating system is just never going to do that. However, in the research that I kind of did after the fact to make sure I was really defeated, I came across a company that specializes in NVMe over fabric. From my basic understanding of all of this, it's a RAID accelerator card based on some GPU technology that specializes in NVMe NVMe over fabrics, which is to say server-based NVMe storage that can then be delivered to clients. So I found this company and then I found out that the software architect of this company, the person who programs this stuff, actually follows me on Twitter because he's been invested in my son's story. So I reached out to him and I asked, hey, could Grade or G-Rate or whatever your product is called support this PS5 idea that I'm having getting Raid set up? At which point he told me no. But there is a solution out there that is 
too complicated and too pricey for anybody to ever explore. And that's by using these Mellanox Bluefield 2 DPUs because Nvidia has a proprietary technology baked into these bad boys, utilizing NVMe over fabrics known as NVMe Snap. And to put this in as layman's terms as I possibly can, it can take NVMe storage that's on a server, deliver it to a client and make it seem as if the NVMe storage that's on the server is locally available on the client. Not using the network, it's operating system agnostic and so it should theoretically work with any device that you connect it to. At which point I was just like, okay, I'm gonna look into this because I, I wanna make this work. I want to create the ultimate PS5 storage. Honestly, I'm so deep into this. I just want to see what are the limits of the PS5 using that M.2 port. The fact that Sony went with just regular expandability into the PlayStation 5 means that we have the opportunity to do crazy things like this. So after a lot of saving, after a lot of thinking and plotting and trying to find out how does NVMe Snap worked, I came to the conclusion that nobody on earth is stupid enough to do this because there's no documentation on the internet about what we're doing and I just had to take the dive. So I purchased two of these Bluefield 2 DPUs which set me back a pretty penny and decided to march forward ahead. Which then required a whole lot of Linux configurating that I just am not equipped for. If you want to know just how bad my Linux knowledge is, somebody in chat told me to type in rm-rf forward slash star and I did it. And you know what I found out that does? Delete your entire Linux operating system. The entire thing that I was working on of trying to get my Linux server set up completely dead God, because I am an idiot. It's, it's like telling kids in COD, hey, if you press Alt F4, you can turn on God mode. I, I'm that guy. I, I got bamboozled by Twitch chat. RM dash RF slash star. Ah, let's do it, things! Oh, that wasn't a Ray Bites. Whoops, that's my bad. I just deleted the whole thing, didn't I? <laughs> I deleted it. I deleted Linux, baby! But my Linux idiocy aside, thankfully, because I have the software architect of grade helping me out, as well as a loyal Discord user known as Ray Bites and plenty of other people who have some basic Linux knowledge, we actually got really, really far on this project. And the reason that I'm making this video before we have it set up on the PS5 is number one, I need extra revenue. I don't, just to be brutally honest, I have to pay off these cards. So making more than one video is kind of in my best interest. But number two, the Linux configuring took way longer than I thought it would. Like oh, over a week of us just working on it every single day in order to get it to even work on a Windows PC. But I'm here to say that it does work. But essentially what we needed to do was tell this Linux server with the four terabytes of RAID 0 NVMe storage graciously provided by Sabrent to be connected to NVMe over fabric, which then because these Mellanox DPUs have 100 gigabit networking, I could then connect this 200 gigabit ethernet cable from the server over to the client and then the DPU that we programmed, we told this to act as if it's emulating NVMe storage, which just means that it's saying, hey, present this drive as if it's locally available on the Windows system and we got it working. It's it, it's set up. We tried it initially with only one terabyte, just a regular NVMe drive connected. <gasps> there it is. That's it. That's the Sprint drive. Ah, we have NVMe over fabric. Ah. That worked. The one terabyte started appearing on the other PC. And then came the complicated challenge of getting RAID to work. So we had to set up this RAID card and then get that configured to present as an NVMe device. And the software architect over at Grade, he did all of the legwork here. I have no clue what I'm doing at this point. Like we had to go so far into the depths of like server-based Linux configuration that like I just, I'm so lost at this point. But thankfully he got the RAID setup working. And so now if we go over onto my Windows PC, we we can see that there is four terabytes of storage. And one of the things that you need to take note of here is that it is not 
running over any sort of network. It's going over this 200 gigabit ethernet cable, but if we look at Task Manager, we can see that it looks as if the drive itself is running and it's not touching our network at all, which is exactly what we need it to be in order for it to work on the PS5. Now, currently it is not working on the PS5, but what is happening and gets me super excited and makes me think that we can get this done is that when we put this into any regular PC, the four terabyte drive shows up in the BIOS before there's any OS configuring, before there's anything that's being done on a driver side. Because the Bluefield 2 hosts its own Linux operating system, when you boot up a PC and it's connected to this card, it actually sees the NVMe over fabric. So it is working. We're getting roughly three to four gigabytes per second read and write speeds, which is not fast enough, number one, because we have 28 gigabytes of storage right here to work with. However, we are also limited by PCI Express lanes. I'm currently working on my 12900K system with Z690. So I have eight lanes of PCI Express 4.0 storage allocated to the Mellanox card that's on here, and then eight lanes allocated to the RAID card. So we're already limited there. We're not getting the full speed on anything that's happening, but we're even further further limited once we go into the PS5 because we only have four lanes of PCI Express 4.0, which is equivalent to roughly 7.8 gigabytes per second. So theoretically, the PlayStation 5 should be all our bottleneck. It shouldn't be the RAID card. It shouldn't be the 100 gigabit ethernet connection. It really should just be at the local end of the PS5. We're gonna max out what's going on there, but we're not that far at the current moment. There's still some configuring that we need to do in order to figure out how to increase speeds because we're again below four gigabytes per second. And even in the time since I've actually filmed this video, you can see that we've actually got it working up to seven gigabytes per second over on Windows. So we're getting even that much closer just with a few days of extra work. And then for getting this set up on the PS5, as far as I understand it, which again, above my pay grade, essentially what we have to do is get the NVMe drive to show up on the right configuring step as the PS5 is booting. If it shows up on the wrong configuring step or if it shows up too late, the PS5 won't recognize this network card as if it was an SSD. So we are super deep into this project. We have made advancements on this, which which I am so excited for. We haven't done anything revolutionary at the current moment, as far as I understand it. We're really just creating a server-based NVMe setup, but we're doing it in a way where it presents itself as local storage, which again is a feature that is native to the NVIDIA cards called NVMe Snap, which NVIDIA made proprietary, which is the only way we're gonna get any of this done. So we're gonna get back into the Linux configuring. There is going to be a part two to this video Video where hopefully we get it working on the PS5 and then I can show you games running on the PS5 being stored on this computer and we'll have network attached PS5 storage. And one of the reasons that is so cool is because you cannot run PS5 games on any sort of external drive on the PlayStation because it needs that PCI Express 4.0 bandwidth. And if we could potentially do that in a server environment, we will have a PS5 setup that nobody else has in the entire world because again, it's too complicated, it's too pricey, and it's a little bit too stupid. But honestly, I really wanna see how far we can take it. At this point, this is purely for fun and investigation. I really wanna know the boundaries of these new consoles that Sony and Microsoft has set up. And I have another video planned for the Xbox Series X where I might be able to change some of the storage on that. I'm very excited for the things that we're doing here. Again, big shout out to my community, both to the software architect at Grade, as well as to ArrayBytes who did so much of the Linux configuring that like I, I would have been lost day one without them on this. But then again, shout out to everybody who supported us on the initial PS5 Raid video because I wouldn't have continued down this pipeline if that video hadn't been so successful. So if you wanna see me continue these crazy videos, if you wanna see me continue to push the boundaries of what consoles can do when you use PC hardware technology, it would mean a lot if you could smash the like button, you could share this video, you could potentially financially support us by signing up to be a patron or over on Floatplane. It means the world to us. This 
is it, honestly the most excited I've been about a tech adventure that I've gone on in quite some time. And I can't wait to see what the conclusion is. I don't have it right now. And that's like, I know it kind of sucks that I'm making a video without the conclusion of it working on the PS5, but we're so close. It's gonna take a little bit more time. It's gonna take a little bit more troubleshooting and configuring on the Linux side. And I'm not the one who is technically inclined to do it. So I will have to wait and be at the mercy of other people to get it done. But your support on these videos makes it possible for us to move forward. So big thanks for watching this. I'm excited. I hope you are too. I'll be back with a conclusion of some kind and hopefully at that point it'll be working on the PS5 and I'll be vindicated in the price that I spent on this project.